Praise the Lord. Good to be in Bible study tonight. We want to welcome everyone to the Bible study this evening. We're going to be in the Gospel of John chapter 7. We'll do a little bit of review and then start afresh in verse 16 tonight. Okay. So remember our services Saturday. We'll post a recording. And then also Sunday morning for Easter. Okay. This Sunday is Easter Sunday. Thank the Lord. He is alive. He's resurrected. And we live in that power of the resurrection. Amen. So join us, uh, not only Saturday night, but especially Sunday morning. Okay. On our YouTube channel, let's go ahead and, and, uh, look to the Lord in prayer and we'll ask his blessing tonight. Father, we thank you for your word. It's time to be gathered. God, to hear your word, to learn from your word. God, we ask your blessing tonight. God bless this Bible study, each one that is listening and Lord, help me to teach tonight for your glory. We thank you right now in Jesus name. Amen. So we learned last Bible study out of the beginning of chapter 7 that Jesus had uh, natural half-brothers and sisters. We know that Mary had a normal marriage after the virgin birth with Joseph, and she had other children. Okay, And we also saw that his brothers did not believe on him at this point. Now, later, at least two of them would. We know that Jude and James would somewhere along the way begin to believe on the Lord. And those two uh, even wrote books in the New Testament. But at this time they taunted him and they were trying to get him to go up to the Feast of the Tabernacles in Jerusalem to uh, show himself to the people there. But Jesus didn't go with them. He, he stayed in Galilee until the middle of the feast, which would have been about three and a half days, a seven-day feast of tabernacles. Okay, and at the middle of that feast, he went up and he went to the temple and he began to teach in the temple. And the Jews marveled at the teaching of Jesus because he did not uh, go to their rabbis or their schools of learning. Okay, now we know that God has put people in the church to teach us. But Jesus got his learning directly from God the Father. Okay, now we we are given pastors and teachers and apostles and various offices in the church for the perfecting of the saints. Let's just uh, go to that verse of scripture to show you that. It's going to be Ephesians chapter 4. And we're going to begin reading in verse 11 and we'll read 11 and 12. Okay. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Okay, To build up the individual and the church as a whole, God put okay, these various positions or offices in the church, and one of them is teachers. Okay, So God puts people in the church that we are to learn from. Okay, and let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 12, and we want to read verse 28, speaking of different positions or offices in the church. Again, that's 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 28. And God hath set some in the church, first apostles, secondarily prophets, thirdly teachers, after that miracles and gifts of healings, helps, governments, that's administration, diversities of tongues. Okay, so God put teachers in the church. We uh, are to learn from those who God appoints over us. And I realize there is a verse of scripture that says, you, you have no need that any man teach you. We go to that portion of scripture, it's dealing with love. Okay, it's not contradicting what's said here in Ephesians 4 and 11 and 1 Corinthians 12 and 28 or other places in the uh, Bible that teaches us that we are to learn okay, from those that God appoints over us. But what it is saying there is that we should not have to have someone teach us that we are to love one another. Okay, if we're a Christian and God is living in our heart and God is love, we should know inherently that we are to love one another. Okay, So Jesus went to the temple and he began to teach and it wasn't his first time going there. We know that he went, uh, even as a young man, when he was 12 years old, okay, he uh, went to the temple 
and he astounded the teachers. That was during the Passover that time, okay, with questions. And he he not only astounded uh, them with the things that he asked, but he answered their questions. Okay, again, at 12 years old, they were learning from him. How much more wisdom did the Lord have now, okay, you know, about 20 years later, okay? We shared last week how that uh, some, some men were sent to catch him in his words, but they went away empty-handed because, okay, they, they said of Jesus, never a man spake like this man. Let's go ahead and go over to Luke chapter 2, and we want to be in verse 46. That's where we, where we will begin. You can read a little bit more there if you'd like, maybe verse 42, but just for time's sake, let's just begin reading in verse 46. And it came to pass that after three days, they found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of the doctors. Now, it's not talking about medical doctors, but doctors of the law, just as in our time, we have different people that have doctorates in different teachings, and they are called doctors, okay? So, sitting in the midst of the doctors, both hearing them and asking them questions, and all that heard him were astonished at, okay, at his answers, amen? Okay, had his understanding and his answer. So, uh, not only was Jesus asking, but Jesus was answering questions. They were asking questions of him, and they were astounded by what he understood and the answers that he gave to their questions, okay? So, let's go now to verse 16, where we're going to pick it up. Okay, done with our, our little bit of review tonight. Let's begin here in verse 16. Jesus answered them, okay, and, and said, My doctrine is not mine, but him that sent me. Okay, so his teaching was from God the Father. If any man will do his will, the Father, he shall know of the doctrine, whether it be of God, and whether I speak of myself. He that speaketh of himself seeketh his own glory, but he that seeketh his glory that sent him, the same is true, and no unrighteousness is in him. Did not Moses give you the law? Yet none of you keepeth the law. Why go ye about to kill me? Okay? So this is why Jesus confounded them. Okay? Because he was teaching and, and uh, preaching okay, the word that he received from God the Father. He was not trying to achieve some personal glory or some personal benefit. On the contrary, he left glory. Okay, he left heaven. He humbled himself and became a man. He he humbled himself even unto death, the death of the cross. Okay, so it wasn't that he was trying to exalt himself. He humbled himself. He was simply teaching the word of God correctly, fully, to do what? to accomplish the will of God the Father. And that's what we need to be doing also. Okay, he sought God the Father's glory. He was endeavoring to persuade men to repent and to follow God, just as you and I are to do today, okay? We're not to try to uh, take the focus and the glory away from not only God the Father, but Jesus Christ, okay, and, and place it upon ourselves. We're to keep the focus on the Word of God and on the Son of God. And we also are to try to persuade men and women to believe on and to follow Him. Not to change God's Word, okay? Not to leave things out to please men, not to accomplish some personal agenda. That's not what it's all about, okay? What are we, what are we trying to do? Are we trying to please men or trying to please God? We should endeavor to try to please God, okay? Not trying to cause people to follow us. Yes, people should follow us as we follow Christ, but we should follow Christ, okay? And endeavor to get other people to follow Christ also because you cannot save anyone. I cannot save anyone. I can't heal anyone. You cannot heal anyone. I can't change a person's life and neither can you, okay? There's only one that can do that and that is God, okay? So we need to point people to the Lord and his word. Okay, the Word of God uh, declares what it declares, brother and sister, and we need to declare it, 
as it is, and we need to properly understand the Word of God. Okay, Paul wrote to Timothy in 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 15, and, and let's read what he, he wrote to him there. He said, study to show thyself approved unto God. Okay, so we were just saying, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Okay, so we need to we need to study God's word. It's what we're doing tonight. We need to correctly understand it. Okay, we want to be approved of God. We want to correctly understand the word of God to correctly help people. Okay, with the word of God. Okay, so the word of God works. It's not it's not something that that we need to try to add things to or take things away from. We just need to believe on it. We need to keep it. Okay, we need to apply the word of God in our lives. Well, these these uh, Pharisees that Jesus was speaking to here in the temple, okay, they didn't keep the word of God. They they didn't believe on the word of God, and they sought to silence Jesus because he was exposing their hypocrisy. You know, we're not we're not going to go to heaven being a hypocrite. You know, we don't have to be. Thank God, we can be real. As I said, we can take the word of God. We can believe on it. We can act upon it. We can apply it in our lives. Okay. We can put our, our, we can repent of our sin and put our faith in Jesus and follow Him, and He can help us to be real. Okay. To be sincere and without offense, as the Bible says. Okay. Well, if we are wrong, and if we are as these people in this Bible setting, uh, we're not uh, keeping the Word of God. In their case, being under the law of Moses, they were not keeping it. Okay, uh, you know what we can do? Something very simple. You and I can repent instead of getting mad at the messenger because uh, he tells us the truth. We can turn away from that hypocrisy and that sin, and we can begin to obey with God help. With God's help, we can begin to obey the word of God. Amen. God is extending His grace to us. The Lord loves us, and if he loves us, he chastens us. He lets us know when we're wrong. God was letting these people know that they were wrong, okay? They, they could have had the right attitude. They could have been thankful that the Lord was sharing the truth with them instead of getting offended and wanting to take his life. It's up to you and I how we react to the truth of the word of God. And thank God tonight, I'm glad that we can react uh, properly, we can act, react the way that God wants us to, and we can we can turn to the Lord and receive what He is saying to us. Verse twenty. Now, okay, the people answered and said, "Thou hast the devil." There it is. Okay, they didn't they didn't uh, receive what He was saying. They got mad and called Him, said that they had a devil. Okay, you, you're going to face things like that as a Christian. People are going to say, "Oh, you know, you're you're involved in the cult, or you're you're." Um, overboard, or you don't need to, to do all of that. Well, you know what, brother and sister, we just do what God teaches us in his word, do what God wants us to do, just like Jesus. People uh, get offended by it, and, and they, they say things. Well, you know what, the Bible tells you and I that we ought to rejoice, okay? We ought to rejoice when we suffer for his name's sake, because the glory of God rests on you and I. People see Christ in us, and that's why they lash out the way that they do. That's why these people were lashing out because the God in in Him, okay, the, His His godliness was absolutely rubbing uh, rubbing against the grain, so to speak, of their of their ungodliness and their hypocrisy, and and uh, it wasn't done, uh, uh, you know, to to uh, hate or anything like this. God wanted these people to get right, as he does all people, and they could have had a different attitude. Thank God you and I can have a different attitude and receive correction from the Lord. Verse 21, Jesus answered and said unto them, I have done one work, and ye all marvel. What is he referring to here, this work that he done, that he had done, that they, they marveled at? Okay, If we go back a little bit, we go back to John chapter 5, okay, and verse 8, beginning there. Okay. We know that Jesus uh, healed a man that had been infirm and lame, and he was there at the pool of Bethesda, and he said he didn't have any man to take him down when the troubles were, the waters were troubled by an angel. But Jesus came along, and Jesus prayed for this man, 
and he was healed and he was made whole. Jesus saith unto him, John 5 and 8, beginning there, Take up thy bed, rise, take up thy bed and walk. And immediately the man was made whole and took up his bed and walked. On this, And the same day was the Sabbath. Okay, so it was their day of rest. And so they began to find fault with Jesus. We go down to verse 18. They found fault with him for healing this man on the Sabbath. Therefore, chapter 5, verse 18, Therefore the Jews sought the more to kill him, because he not only had broken the Sabbath, but said also that God was his father, making himself equal with God. Well, God is his father, okay? And uh, it was not wrong for him to heal uh, on the Sabbath, okay? Something that God promised the Jewish people, even before the law, God promised them that God uh, would heal them, okay? We'll get into that in just a moment. Okay, but, but let's look at this here. He does. He told them there that that he did the works of the Father. Okay, if they would just look upon what he was doing, and though it was the Sabbath, he said, "My Father works, and I work hitherto." Okay, so God the Father works on the Sabbath. He accomplishes things on the Sabbath, and the Son did also. Okay, they they misunderstood God's uh, reason. For giving them that day of rest, okay? It wasn't that you could not do anything to help someone. He even told them in another place, if you have an ox and it falls into a ditch on the Sabbath day, you'll go get it out. Okay, isn't a man worth more than some animal? Of course he is, okay? So they became offended, and we see even back there in chapter 5 that they wanted to take his life. And that's important because as we we look there, they said, you know, you're crazy. You have a devil who's trying to take your life. They were. It was already something that they they were uh, planning and, and wanting to do. Okay, it wasn't his time yet. It would have happened until the time that it, uh, God the Father allowed it at his crucifixion. But nonetheless, it's something that they uh, were trying to do and find were finding trying to find an opportunity. To do say, so let's go back to John chapter seven, and now we are going to be in verse twenty-two. Okay, verse twenty-two. Okay, and let me see here. Verse twenty-two. Moses therefore gave unto you circumcision, okay, not because it is of Moses, but of the fathers. And ye on the Sabbath day circumcise a man. If a man on the Sabbath day receive circumcision. Okay, that the law of Moses should not be broken. Are you angry at me because I have because I have made a man every whit whole on the Sabbath day? Judge not according to appearance, but judge righteous judgment. So uh, Moses, God had Moses uh, reiterate the the covenant or the the agreement of circumcision that God made with Abraham way back over in the book of Genesis, okay? Um, I believe it's chapter 17, verse 10. Okay, so God made a covenant with Abraham, and then under the law, Leviticus 12 and 3, okay, it was it was stated again. God, God kept that promise that was made to Abraham. He kept it under the law. Well, the promise of healing was given to the Jews Okay, in Exodus chapter 15, before the law, God promised them there that he is the Lord. He said, I am the Lord that healeth thee, that, that none of the plagues that came on the Egyptians would come upon them, and that he would heal them. It was a promise from God, and God keeps his promises. Just because the law came in, that didn't do away with healing. Okay, God, God is still a healer, brother and sister. If you're sick, somebody, your loved ones are sick. Let us know. You know the Bible says, uh, bring them to the elders of the church. And they'll lay hands on them and pray for them. They've committed any sin; they'll be forgiven. You know, God will heal, and and uh, we will pray for you. But you know, you can pray for yourself also. Okay, if you're not feeling well, maybe you're afraid of of this uh, plague, this virus that's going around. Okay, pray. God is able to protect you. Okay, Amen. And just have a good report, my wife. Uh, was feeling ill and coughing and having shortness of breath and some of the symptoms of of this COVID. But um, others prayed for her. I prayed for her. She went and had a, a test done and thanked the Lord. 
They would give glory to God. It came out negative. And I really believe that God touched her because she was very ill. God still does that. Okay? We're not against doctors or anything like that. But you know, Christian, you can pray. And God will heal you. God is a healer. And God had promised them healing. And so Jesus was telling them here, you know, I, 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 I've accomplished what God promised you. You know, yeah, you, you, you're okay with somebody being an uh, um, eight-day-old eight uh, baby being circumcised uh, on the Sabbath day, if that's when it takes place. You don't have a problem with that so that the law is fulfilled. Well, I'm healing somebody, so what's the Sabbath? I'm fulfilling a promise that was made by God to heal his people. Okay, so that's what he was doing. Amen. And 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 we have to we have to judge righteous judgment. We have to look at things. What's right? What's correct? I mean I mean, do we honestly believe that God is more concerned with you taking it easy, uh, not doing any kind of labor on a certain day? God is more concerned with that than with somebody that is uh, paralyzed and lame being made whole. Okay, God is more concerned with the welfare of that person. Okay, God is more concerned with the welfare of that person. God is a compassionate and a loving God. He doesn't want people sick. It's not God's desire. We don't go around teaching that these things that are going on are judgment from God. We'll see judgment from God during the tribulation. Or we'll, we'll see it from heaven. Those of us that are, that are saved will we'll escape all of that through the rapture. But you want to see God pour out judgment, go read the book of Revelation, okay, uh, beginning in about uh, chapter 4, go on from there, and you'll see when God begins to send judgment. You want to see judgment from God, go read about the flood of the whole earth, okay? We're not, we're not blaming God for this uh, disease that is going around, okay? That's just part of the fall of man and of sin. These things happen. It's not... Let's not blame God. Okay, so let's go on now. Let's go ahead and finish this up tonight. You know, God is a good God, and we love God, and God loves you, and you can love him in return. Okay, so let's go now to uh, verse 25, okay, there in John chapter 7, okay, verse 25. Then said some of them <clears throat> of Jerusalem, is not this he whom they seek to kill? So some of them uh, called him a devil because he said they were trying to kill him, but others... Uh, knew that they were trying to kill him. As, again, we read that in chapter 5 and verse 18. Okay, so it's something that already happened and people, some people knew about it. But verse 26, below he speaketh boldly and they say nothing unto him. Do the rulers know indeed that this is the very Christ? So they they knew they knew that that the rulers were were afraid to speak against him. They 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 couldn't deny what he was saying. He he had more wisdom uh, than them, and he was speaking the truth, and they wondered. People wondered, "Hey, do the rulers really know that this is the Christ?" Well, I believe that some of them did, and they, as Pilate said, they delivered him up because of envy. They were jealous. Okay. And anyway, let's go on. Okay, verse twenty-seven. Howbeit, we know that this, we know this man whence he is. But when Christ cometh, no man knoweth whence he is. It is said that the the Pharisees taught that nobody would know where Christ was from. Well, that's not, uh, that's not what the Bible teaches, okay? We could go to uh, Micah chapter 5 and verse 2, okay? And what does it say there? It says there, But thou, Bethlehem, Ephrathah, though thou be little among thousands of Judah, yet out of thee shall he come forth unto me, that is to be ruler in Israel, whose going forth have been from old, from everlasting. Okay, and that's fulfilled in Matthew chapter 2, beginning in verse 1. Man, there's so many more prophecies that we could mention and, and show their fulfillment. But we'll, for time's sake, just read here in Matthew chapter 2, beginning in verse 1. Now, when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. Okay. When Herod the king had heard these things, he was troubled in all Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he demanded of them where Christ should be born. And they said unto him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet. 
and thou, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are not the least among the princes of Judah, for out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. Okay, so the prophecy was fulfilled. They knew. Okay, it was in there. It was in the in the uh, Old Testament scriptures. And brother and sister, you know, we we have the Word of God. We have the Old Testament and the New Testament. There's no reason why we shouldn't uh, have a correct knowledge of who Jesus is. Okay, it's up to you and I. We choose to believe. And we hope that you do. We hope that that you will put your faith in Jesus Christ. That you will look to him. Not to be like these people, to deny him and reject him. But to receive what is plainly before your sight. The love and the mercy of God extended to you through his son Jesus Christ. We're going to end right there tonight. Again, let's remember our recordings Saturday and Sunday morning. God bless you is our prayer. Amen.